Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Daniel Moss with Moss Family Chiropractic. I'm excited to be here with you tonight, and uh, we're going to be talking about how to keep your heart strong, because too many people right now, they don't understand what heart disease really is and what causes it. And, you know, we're as a doctor of chiropractic, we're doctors of cause, which means I really want to get down to the root cause of these issues and how can we help you prevent them in the first place. So um, this is our first webinar, so I hope this goes well. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, you'll see a place that you can comment, and those comments will come right to me. So if you have any questions that you want me to address um, or anything that you want to let me to know, you can send those right to me, and I get to see them on this screen, which is pretty neat stuff. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I am a chiropractor. Um, I've been here in Canton for the past 17 years, and uh, I went to school honestly, to become a medical doctor and change my mind the last time because it didn't make much sense to me anymore just taking medication anymore just to mask the symptom. And I learned more about chiropractic. It made a lot of sense to me. And I, man, I'm so glad I became a chiropractor because it has been my calling. It is my favorite thing I get to do. I've been doing it for 17 years. I look forward to going to my office every single day and changing people's lives with the principle of how we teach and what we teach here. Um, I am also ICPA certified since 2008 because I am, um, I love kids. I love changing kids' lives. And I understand that if we can help teach this lifestyle to children from the day that they're born, they're gonna be healthier than anybody else we know. And my three kids are a testament to that. Um, and being a max living doctor means that we're on a mission. We are on a mission to change healthcare. We know that what we're doing and how we're living our lifestyle, where we're just living in a reactive mode, doing nothing about it, and then going to doctors and taking medication, it's not fixing the problem. We want to empower people to understand how health works, how your body works, that God put an amazing healing power inside of us, and it is supposed to be there to heal us without interference. And when it's interfered, whether it's subluxation from your spine or you know, you're eating poorly or not exercising, it gets in the way of what you're supposed to be doing, what your body's trying to do. And if we can integrate what we call the five essentials of max living into people's lives in our communities, we will all be happier and healthier. So let's go ahead and get into this information. So what is the world's number one death causing disease? And no, it is not COVID-19. Believe it or not, it is still cardiovascular disease, most commonly called heart attacks and stroke. I mean, one out of three deaths in the United States is due to heart disease. One death every 38 seconds. I've been talking for two minutes. Do the math. That's not good. This is not good. And the fact is, it's costing us trillions of dollars, billions every year. And, you know, 836,000 people died last year in the United States due to cardiovascular disease, which is a 40% increase since 2015. It's getting worse. Why is it getting worse? Because we're not doing anything different. We're still doing the same stuff. Blood pressure medication, statins, cholesterol lowering medication, and we're not changing what's causing it in the first place. So, you know, we start to think that heart disease is normal with aging, right? It's when it's for those older folks that are getting older and those are the people that have heart disease that's not true that is a myth it is not normal part of aging it is common absolutely it is very common but there's nothing normal about heart disease heart disease is just a symptom of a poor lifestyle i mean look at this u.s news and world report reported 25 percent of children five years old and older already have plaque building up in their arteries that's not good 60% of 15 to 19 year olds have plaque building up in their arteries. This is not an older person disease, but we think so because five year olds are not having heart attacks. 15 to 19 year olds aren't really having heart attacks. It's got a, it started then and it built for years before it actually showed its ugly head, which is why they call us the silent killer. It's been silently killing you for years. You just didn't know it. And if you don't know it, why would you do anything different until you're gone? This is not good. So according to the CDC, the risk factors of developing heart disease are high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and smoking. Okay, but we forgot about some other choices like um, being overweight, obesity, I mean choice, but poor diet, making those poor dietary choices, choosing not to work out, excessive alcohol use, 
diabetes, these are all things that are lifestyle induced that lead to heart disease. So one of the things I really want to drive home is the myth about cholesterol. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. Cholesterol. It cl I eat fatty foods. I eat fried foods. That brings cholesterol into my body. It clogs up my arteries and causes me to have a heart attack. Does that sound familiar? That's what I thought. I mean, that's what I, if I, as, that's what I thought. I'm guessing that that's what most people thought too, because that's what we've all been taught. Stop eating fried foods because it's high in cholesterol and it's going to clog up your arteries. Um, that's actually not how that whole thing works. And once you understand more about what cholesterol is and how it works, it's going to make so much more sense to you. Even better is you're going to know exactly what you should be doing, and it's not avoiding cholesterol. Okay, so what is cholesterol? Cholesterol, it's a soft, waxy sub substance, and guess what? It's made by your liver. 80% of the cholesterol in your body is actually made by your liver, which means only 20% of the cholesterol found in your body comes from your diet. Okay, now why the heck is your, is your body making cholesterol? It is there for a reason. Okay, now cholesterol is needed to manufacture hormones, bile acid, vitamin D, all right, your hormones. So like estrogen, testosterone, cortisone, these hormones cannot be made without cholesterol. So if you don't have cholesterol, you don't have hormones, you don't have hormones, you're not a happy camper, your body doesn't function very well, how are you supposed to be healthy? You can't. We actually need cholesterol to be healthy. Now, you notice at the bottom of the screen that I have HDL and I have LDL. And if you've ever had your, your blood taken and looking for cholesterol, you'll see the scores of HDL and LDL. And most of you would probably know that LDL is the bad cholesterol and HDL is the good cholesterol. Um, I want to just debunk that as well. I want to give you some more truths behind that. So HDL and LDL are not actually cholesterol. They are called high-density or low-density lipoproteins. They're fat-wrapped protein that actually carries cholesterol. So I like to think of these as taxi cabs for cholesterol. They only carry one passenger. His name is cholesterol. HDL is known as good because it actually takes your cholesterol away from injury sites back to the liver to be metabolized. And low-density lipoproteins, your LDL, are the ones that are picking the cholesterol up at the liver and taking it into the body for use. So if your HDLs are high, that means your body's repaired and it's healed. LDL is high. That means there's an injury site. And something's not so good. You have some, some, some kind of injury that your body's trying to fix. So does cholesterol itself cause the heart disease? The answer is no. But if you have heart disease or you had a heart attack and they look in and they see that the, the uh, artery was filled with cholesterol, what is somebody going to think? What caused the heart disease? What caused the heart attack? Well, they were clogged, right? The arteries were clogged with cholesterol. Cholesterol is the bad guy. Not true. Okay. High cholesterol does not mean that you're going to have a heart attack. In fact, study after study shows that 75% of the people that were, this one study I looked at, 75% of the patients that were hospitalized at this one hospital in England, 75% of them that came in with heart disease, a heart attack, had either normal or low cholesterol normal or low, not high. What they're showing is that high cholesterol, now not extremely high, but higher cholesterol is actually more protective than low cholesterol. Again, if you have low cholesterol, you're not protecting your body. Your body doesn't have anything it needs, have what it needs to use to protect your body. But if you have low cholesterol, you're not making your hormones. This is not good. This is not good. So let's get to this. This is my favorite slide because this is where I'm really going to help you understand um, what is causing the cholesterol? What is causing the heart disease? So you can see here, there are four um, pictures of arteries. You don't need to look too closely at these. My point is they're supposed to be smooth on the inside. Now, when you eat things that cause inflammation to the arteries, what are those things? Um, sugar, sugar causes inflammation. So anything that's a carbohydrate, so your white bread, your white potato, your potato chips, fried foods, bad fats, Omega sixes, these are all things that are going to cause inflammation. So if you're eating these bad trans fats, you're eating sugar, you're eating these grains, it causes inflammation inside. So think about this. 
if I have my arm here and I meant to bring, and I didn't, I forgot to bring it, um, a prop here, think of um, steel wool. So if I have steel wool and I have my arm right here and I start to, I scrape it once or twice, anything really gonna happen? Probably, probably not, right? This would be the equivalent of me having a piece of cake on my birthday. No big deal. If it gets a little red, what's my body going to do to that? That little rash there, it's going, it's going to heal it, right? What if I ate that way every day? Breakfast, cereal, lunch, sandwich, dinner, pasta. If I just keep scraping the inside of my arm, what is going to happen? What's my arm going to look like after a couple of weeks of that? Months. What's that going to look like? Red, inflamed, bloody, gross? Yeah. That's what's happening to the inside of our artery walls when we're eating these types of foods. So our body is so smart. What does it do? It recognizes this inflammation. It recognizes as an injury. So what it does, it sends cholesterol via LDLs to the injury site. It's that, remember, it, cholesterol is a soft, waxy substance. So it's like pasting on the injury. It's like putting a paste on the injury. All right? So. If we only did that once or twice, we cut, had a problem, but then we stopped doing it. We stopped injuring it. Well, that's not going to stay there forever because it's no longer needed once it heals. Once it heals, HDLs go pick up the cholesterol and take it back to the liver. Sounds smart, right? What, though, if we, if we don't change anything and we're constantly eating that poor diet, that inflammatory diet, we're constantly causing more inflammation, more injury to these arteries. So what is your body going to continue to do? send more cholesterol, send more LDL. So if your LDLs are high, that means that you have inflammation in your arteries and there's an injury and your body's trying to do what? It's trying to heal it. So let's think, is the cholesterol the problem? Well, again, in some of you who has heart disease, we open up that artery, see it full of cholesterol. We would think that, look at that, that cholesterol clogged it, that was the cause. We need to take another step further. What caused the cholesterol to be put there in the first place? That is inflammation. Okay, you reduce the inflammation, you're not going to need the cholesterol anymore. You're going to heal again. This is what comes down to one of the 33 principles of chiropractic. The body has its own innate intelligence. Okay, the body knows exactly what to do when it needs to do it. You don't have to think about it. It just does it right. As long as there's no interference between the intelligence in your brain, get into your body, your body will heal the way it was designed to heal and you would be healthy. Principle 25, the character of innate forces, the forces of innate intelligence that power inside of us never injures or destroys the structures in which they work, which means that, that power that God put inside of us will never injure us. It will never destroy the structures within it works. But that doesn't, that kind of goes against what we're talking about here, right? That kind of goes against the fact that, well, cholesterol was put there and that killed me. No, the body did the right thing at the right time. It was our fault. It was our fault that we did not pay attention to signs. We, we did not eat proper food and we didn't understand how this all works. I mean, if 80% of the cholesterol in your body is made by your body, don't you think there's a reason for it? Yeah, there is a reason for it. We need to start thinking about those things. So now that you understand cholesterol is actually a good thing. Cholesterol is there to help you heal should you lower your cholesterol. Well, if every symptom in the body is the body doing the right thing at the right time, I would say absolutely not. Now, a lot of cardi cardiologists will still insist on lowering the cholesterol because they said that there's a correlation between a reduced reduction in risk of heart attack, but few can actually say that there is a reduction in the risk of mortality. Ron Rosedale, medical, he's a medical doctor. He said, in other words, it has never been conclusively shown that lowering cholesterol saves lives. In fact, several large studies have shown that lowering cholesterol into the range currently recommended is correlated with an increased risk of death, not of heart disease, but of cancer. Isn't that interesting? So what causes our cholesterol to skyrocket? Okay, we need to start thinking about this. What causes high cholesterol would be the same thing that causes inflammation, a poor diet, okay? Maybe, maybe, many people are gonna say saturated fat, but it's not the saturated fat, it's damaged fats. It's trans fats. We're gonna talk about that here a little bit later. Lack of exercise, okay? If you're not exercising, not pumping the blood, not getting oxygen to your cells, you're going to be inflamed. 
being overweight, being older. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things. Fried food, high omega-6s. Omega-6s are your inflammatory fats and omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. They need to be in the right balance. We're going to talk about that here tonight as well. Now, a couple of years back, I did a workshop similar to this. And during my research, I wanted to see what, you know, the number one medication was for lowering cholesterol, and that was Lipitor. And on their site, on their site, it says Lipitor reduces risk of heart attack by 36%. I thought that that sounds significant. Why would you not want to take that, right? But you see that little thing there, a little asterisk right above the percentage sign? I always like to see what those mean because there's usually some really good nuggets in there. So if you go to the bottom of the screen, I'm not sure how well you can read that. Um, but what that says, that we're at the asterisk, it says that means in a large clinical study, 3% of patients taking a sugar pill or placebo had a heart attack compared to 2% of patients taking Lipitor. How'd they get 36% reduction? To me, and I'm not a st statistician, but just looking at that, if 3% of people had it, had a heart attack taking a placebo and 2% had it taking Lipitor, to me, that looks like a 1% reduction, not 36%. Is a 1% reduction clinically significant? The answer is no, it is not clinically significant. In fact, you have to do risk versus reward. What is the risk of taking these medications versus the reward? Well, if the reward is a 1%, yet the dangers of taking the medication is liver damage, neuropathy, severe joint pain, ligament rupture, muscle wasting. Guess what else is a muscle? Your heart. So your heart might fail. All right, limiting protection from cholesterol against cancer, depression. This is not good stuff. In fact, I can't tell you how many patients have come to me because their back was hurting or their, ache, their joints were aching all over. And we started care and they weren't responding as well as I thought. And I looked back at their paperwork and I noticed that they're on a statin medication. And I told them, go talk to your doctor, see if you can get off of it, see if that's the cause, because I bet you money that's causing all your problems. They come back, they got off of it. And guess what happened in four weeks? Their pains went away. Amazing, right? It happens all the time. So cholesterol drugs increase heart attacks. I mean, there's just research after research about how these medications are not good for us. In fact, two of the big problems with these statin medications, one, because they are reducing your cholesterol. Remember, if you reduce your cholesterol, how are you going to have the backbone to make your, med your, your testosterone, your estrogen? You're not making your hormones. But guess what else is made of cholesterol? Your brain. 60% of your brain is actually made of cholesterol. So if you're reducing the backbone, the cholesterol that you're, is made of your brain, what's going to happen to your, your psyche? This is why one of the number one, you know, the number one uh, side effect of taking these medications is actually depression. The other problem here is that when this ends, so the way these cholesterol medications work, it stops an, a certain enzyme from allowing your body to make cholesterol, but that same enzyme stops another pathway that creates CoQ10. And CoQ10, your body is supposed to make. It's an antioxidant. It's needed for, to create energy in your body, um, but it also helps reduce inflammation. And that protects you from cancer. It protects you from aging. And so if you are taking a statin right now, 100% across the board, you should be taking CoQ10. If you're not taking CoQ10, that's a major problem. You have to take CoQ10. Okay. Um, so where do you get your CoQ10? Lots of places have it. I know our, I, the, the only reason why I even have supplements in my office is because I was tired of people going to stores and buying the cheap stuff. In a nutshell, the most expensive stuff is the stuff that you buy that does not work, right? Because you just wasted 100% of your funds. I know our stuff. I know our stuff works. CoQ10 with lip, lipoic acid, lipofilipoic acid. So it's, got, it's great for energy production. Um, you know, it helps with blood pressure. It helps with all kinds of different things. But this is something, if you're on that medication, you're not going to stop it. Please, please, please get CoQ10 somewhere, okay? All right. What about blood pressure? So. A lot of people I know, especially my patients, they come in here, I'd say the number one and number two medication people are on is a blood pressure lowering medication and a statin medication to lower their cholesterol. I mean, when's the last time you went to the doctor, had your blood pressure taken, it was normal. I mean, you get in there, they make you wait for an hour just to go into a little room, put a gown on, wait another hour, you're freezing cold, and then they come in, they barely talk to you and they put the blood pressure cuff on. Are you gonna be a little anxious? Yeah, your blood pressure is probably gonna be a little bit high. But remember, going back to 
principle number 25. Your body is always doing the right thing. It's not the innate forces are not there to destroy in the place in which it works. So look at this picture here. We have a picture of honestly, and I didn't know this at the time, the most aggressive wild animal out there. And that's the hippopotamus. So this guy's walking through the wood. The hippo turns and sees him and starts chasing him. What do you think is happening to his blood pressure right now? It's going up, right? Does his body need that blood pressure to go up? The answer is absolutely. If he wants to get blood and oxygen to his muscles so he can run and sprint and get and save his life and get away from him, he needs his blood pressure to be high. Once he goes to safety, what the hippo has gone, what's going to happen to the blood pressure? It's going to do what? It's going to go back down. That is normal. That's what we're supposed to do. So what would happen then if this man was on a blood pressure lowering medication because, or let's say we just put it on it because we noticed it was high. Do you think he would outrun that hippo? Probably not. He would, his body wouldn't be unable to. We blocked his ability to do what it needed to do at that moment. This is not a good thing. This is not. So why do we, why does our blood pressure go high? What, what causes blood pressure to go high? Typically it's, it's stress, you know, work stress, kids stress, manage the household stress, eating poorly, being overweight. These are all things that cause that to go up. Now, again, acute stress is a normal thing. Your blood pressure is supposed to go up and then it's supposed to come back down. The unfortunate thing is the lifestyle that we live right now, we are always stressed. Too many people are so stressed. I can't tell you how many patients of mine, they work a job that stresses them out so much. And some of these people have lost their jobs lately and they seem like different people. They are so much more relaxed. They're so much happier because they don't have that stress. Now, I understand that that stress is going to build back up when we don't have a job. We're not making money. But at the same point, why are we working just to make money? I, I don't want to waste my life doing something that I don't care about just to make money. I want to do what I love. And if it's not, you know, if you're doing what you love, it's not work anymore, right? So we try to reduce stress as we can. So um, the good news is that we can remove a lot of this. We can remove a lot of this stress. Um, so the experts, the CDC, right? Yeah. Um, these are their recommendations when it comes to heart disease. Follow your doctor's instructions. Stay on your medications. I don't like that one. Eat a healthy diet that's low in salt. I kind of like that one. Low in total fat, maybe not so much. Saturated fat, don't like that either. But something that's rich in fruit and vegetables, yeah, I like that. That's good. Take a brisk 10-minute walk three times a day, five days a week. I like that. Get up, get off your butt and move, right? That's We need to be doing that. Don't smoke. Great. But this is where they also say on their site. Expect to treat high blood pressure for life. Really? I don't believe a word of that. Again, if your blood pressure is high, there's got to be a reason for it. If you're overweight, and that's going to cause your blood pressure to go high because your blood, your heart needs to higher blood pressure to pump more fluid to more arteries to get it through all the more tissue that you have. So go to the doctor and take a medication to lower my blood pressure. Now my body's not going to get what it needs and I'm going to get sicker because of it. But don't change anything that caused you to get there in the first place. That's not the way to, that's not how health works, guys. You have to understand if you're, if you're overweight, you can fix that. All right. If you have high blood pressure, you can fix that. If your cholesterol is high, you can fix that. These are all lifestyle induced. And the good news is if you lifestyled your way into one of these problems, you can also lifestyle your way right back out. You can do it. All right. That's what we're here to do. We're here to help you and give you those tools and give you that, that motivation you might need to make these changes and make these choices. Because if you're on blood pressure medication, when's the last time you read the side effects of these blood pressure medications? And here's one thing about, uh, about um, side effects. Just because you took it for a week and didn't experience a side effect doesn't mean that you're immune to the side effects of this medication. Sometimes people can be on these medications for many years before they have one of these problems. But then they run to a doctor thinking that it's a new problem. It has nothing to do with the medication. Why would they? And next thing you know, they're on four different other medications. So, I mean, look at this. Uh, extra urination, asthma, cold hands and feet, depression. I mean, there's a drug for all these things, guys, but that's not the answer. The answer is get to the cause. Get to the cause of these problems. Cholesterol increases due to inflammation. Reduce inflammation. 
How do you do that? Eat better fatty acids, less sugar, excess fat, toxicity. Re remove these things from your body and from your diet and from your lifestyle, and these things will inflammation will go down. Blood pressure rises due to physical, mental, emotional, or even nerve pressure related stresses. Remove these stresses to the best of our ability. Manage them the best you can. And we do this. We we do all this through the lens of what we call the five essentials of max living. And with max living, we've come up with these five essentials. We did not invent this. All right. We did not create this. God created this for every human being. All we did was figure out that there's really just the five things that every human being on this earth needs to address on a consistent and regular basis if they actually want to be healthy. That's it. I always tell my patients, thank God there's only five, right? So let's go through these five. Core chiropractic. That's number one for a reason. I am a chiropractor. And too many people think that chiropractic is back pain, neck pain, and that's it. And if you're going to your chiropractor for back pain or neck pain, and that's it, you're missing the big picture. Uh, one of my one of my doctor friends once said that, you know, going to the chiropractor for back pain is like going to rob a bank and stealing just the pens. It doesn't make sense. You're missing the big picture. OK, you want the big picture. It has to do with living your God given life. All right. We were all put on this earth for a reason. We all have a purpose. And we do not want anybody to not be able to fulfill their purpose because of their health. And you lose your health when there's something blocking the information that God put inside of our brain that runs down your spinal cord and out along your nerves to your body. When there's an interference, and that interference is called subluxation. If there's a subluxation blocking off the life to your body, what's going to happen to your body? Do you think it's going to heal? No. It puts you into a state of what we call dis-ease. And that state of disease over time leads to disease dysfunction and eventually failure. So my job as a chiropractor, I do not diagnose anything except subluxation. I find the subluxation and I remove it. And by removing that pressure off the nerve, all I'm doing is allowing your body to do what it's been trying to do from the second you've been created. And that is to heal itself. You take the pressure off, your body heals. It happens every single time. Okay. Number two, nutrition. We all could eat better, can't we? Don't put on the COVID-19, right? Right. We don't want to be sitting at home eating junk food, feeling sorry for ourselves and eating all the ice cream. And then, you know, I think somebody said when we come out, I need two weeks. I need two weeks to come out of quarantine so I can lose that 15, 20 pounds I just gained. Right. All right. So let's eat better. We can all do that. We can teach you guys how to eat better. Mindset. Understand that you were created for greatness. You're created to heal. And understand that health does not come from a doctor. Health does not come from a chiropractor. Health does not come from a pill or a fruit. It comes from God from inside out. And you're supposed to be healthy. When you realize that your normal proper state of being is that of health, you would be pissed if it was anything other than that. And if it started to get off balance and start to go down a road that was not health, you should take immediate action then, not wait until you're on your deathbed on 14 medications, miserable, going, oh, man, maybe I should do something about it now. OK, I want you to have that mindset of empowerment. When you understand how your body works and how it heals, you make better choices. Exercise and oxygen. So exercise and oxygen. We need to exercise, right? We need to get off our butts. We need to move. So in my office, we teach what's called Max T3. It is a, um, a type of workout. It's a, it's a metabolic conditioning workout. I work out 36 minutes a week. A lot of people don't believe me, but I do only 36 minutes and I don't like working out. I will be honest. I do it because I want oxygen to my cells. I want to reduce inflammation. I want to reduce the, the chances of having heart disease or cancer. Okay. So I do these things. And with these 12 minute workouts, you burn fat for 36 hours. So it's a very effective and efficient way of working out. Um, you can go to the maxt3.com. That is where we get our workouts from. Um, most of you that are patients that are watching this right now, hopefully you've watched it and actually did it with them and didn't watch them do it and eat popcorn. Say that was a, that was a workout, right? Um, I want you actually doing these workouts. If you ever need help with those, if you don't know how to do these things, let us know. We're here to help you. Um, you know, uh, and then we need to minimize our exposure to toxins. And toxins are found everywhere. We did a workshop a couple of weeks ago about toxicity and where you find them. And we need to just make sure that we are recognizing what are toxic, what are toxins and, and start minimizing our exposure to them. And it's funny. I keep getting these. Um, I have some friends of mine that keep sending me pictures of memes of, you know, quarantine life. Right. And this is just this is just funny because it, it reminds me of 
you know, exercising. We all need to get out. We all need to move. But people normally, when we're not quote unquote quarantined, we're sitting there on our phones and laptops and all this other stuff. And then you go outside now that we're supposed to be inside. What do you see? Everybody's outside on bikes, riding, walking. It's it's kind of funny to me. Um, in fact, you know, one of one of the things here about mindset, I like to laugh. My wife likes to laugh. It's one of our favorite date nights is to go to see a co comedian because who doesn't like to laugh, right? And laughing actually improves your mood. Um, it reduces, um, it, it, it improves your immune system. It does so many good things for you. Um, I'm going to do this. I told my wife I was going to do it and she didn't know if it was going to be a good idea, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, if you want to laugh tonight, now I, I try to be funny. I'm, I don't think I'm very funny here tonight. Um, my wife doesn't think I'm funny at all. I think I am, but um, if you want to laugh tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a, a, my favorite comedian ever. You can see him on YouTube and I'm just going to give you a heads up. He is not clean. Okay. He is um, not appropriate either, which is why my wife said maybe you shouldn't say it. But you know what? We could all use a good laugh. Just don't watch him with your kids. His name is Pablo Francisco. He is on YouTube. Watch one of his um, hour long specials. Um, my wife and I watch them and we basically cry laughing because it's so darn funny. He's out of control. I think the man's actually crazy, which is part of his appeal. All right, moving on. That's something you can do after we're done here. Um, so let's talk about food. What are some things that are going to cause inflammation? Sugars, grain and, grains, and refined carbohydrates. This is what happens. You eat sugar, it increases your blood sugar, obviously, right? But grains and refi refined carbohydrates also turn into sugar. So when you're eating that piece of white bread, it might not say there's any sugar in it, but white bread is full, full on carbohydrates that can, gets converted to sugar. And then what happens? What does our body use to decrease the blood sugar? It sends our cortisol and insulin up to help reduce that. So when cortisol and insulin go up, you have to understand that increases inflammation. Okay, it increases this enzyme, PLA2, increases inflammation that causes 90% of diseases, especially heart disease and cancer. And inflammation causes damage to the walls of the, ce the cell walls of the arteries. Again, that's going to lead to the cholesterol to be sent out via LDL and cause more issues. So this is why sugar is such a bad thing. Refined grains, carbohydrates. So you really want to minimize your carbohydrate intake. Um, and we do that through our advanced plan. So if you have heart disease, um, let me grab a book here. If you have heart disease, this book right here, this is called Align Your Health. There, we have these here. If you're a patient, you should already have a copy of this. If you're an old patient, you should have the Max Living Nutrition Plans book. The advanced plan, we take out sugars and grains out of your diet. So you're eating fats, protein, and some good carbs. Okay, I'm talking about greens and vegetables, but the low carbohydrate fruit like um, grapefruit, green apples, and berries. And when you're doing, when you're eating that, this is why it, this is why it helps to reduce. Um, insulin, reduce cortisol, reduce inflammation. That's why th that diet right there, the advanced plan, you can find that on our website as well. It will help reduce, not only reduce, but actually reverse heart disease, cancer. And, and this is how it does it, by reducing inflammation. You reduce the inflammation, your body will be allowed to heal. What else can we do? We also need to look at our fats. We need to be eating fats. Fats are good for us. Now, the fats that I want to talk to you about real, real fast about is the omega-6s and omega-3s. Omega-3s are typically thought of as anti-inflammatory, and omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Now, the real problem here is when we eat them out of a balance. We need both of them. Okay, We need 3s and we need 6s, but they need to be in the proper ratio. And the proper ratio is right there at the bottom. It needs to be either a 1 to 1 ratio of omega-3s and omega-6s, all the way up to four to one. So four sixes for every one. That makes sense. Okay, so you can have more sixes than ones, but they need to be in that right ratio. Here's the problem. The typical American diet is not one to one. It's not four to one. It's actually 20 to one. 20 to one. High omega sixes. This is why there's so much inflammation. This is why when you have inflammation, you lead to cancer and heart disease and diabetes. No wonder those are the top three killers in the United States. So just by changing the type of fat you eat can make a huge difference. So what are these bad fats? Hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils. So that's your cottonseed oil, soybean oil, vegetable oil, um, trans fats. That's your margarine. You know, was it Smart Balance? Earth? I don't even know the name of it. I think it's Smart Balance. These are 
vegetable oils that they've heated to high temperature, injected it with hydrogen and nickel, and allow it to change one hydrogen atom so that it becomes solid at room temperature. And then they put yellow dye in it and make it taste like butter. And they call that a heart healthy you know, food. That's crazy. Those are the trans fats that we were trying to keep you away from. Those are causing, that's the that's sandpaper, that's the steel wool right on the inside of your blood vessel. No. So trans fats, no. Rancid oils. These are ones that have already gone bad, but you can't tell because they deodorize them. Corn oil, canola oil, um, simply called vegetable oil. And they're found in everything that has a long shelf life. Every cracker, cake, bread that has a long shelf life, they have a long shelf life because they're using these types of oils. So let's get rid of these oils and let's just substitute them with healthy oils. And the good news is, if you're the cook and you're watching this right now, your family will have no idea you made a change. They won't, they will have no idea. So what should? what are the good fats? What are the ones we should be doing? Extra virgin olive oil, most people know that that's pretty good for us, right? What most people don't know that is if you heat it up over medium heat, okay? So you start taking it on high heat, you've just ruined that, that extra virgin olive oil, made it just as bad as the bad fats. You've oxidized it. That is not a good thing. So we do not want to cook on over medium heat with extra virgin olive oil, which is typically what I don't do. What I what I use to cook with is typically coconut oil. And if you're going to go with high, high heat, like a wok, avocado oil. Those are the oils that are much better for you. So eat more avocados, eat more coconut, eat your raw nuts, your seeds. Um, if you're going to do butter, awesome. I love butter. Carry gold, grass-fed butter. That's the only thing you should be using. Not, I can't believe it's not butter. That's ridiculous. Get the real thing. Okay. We're also going to find good fats in your meats. So if you're going to eat beef, it needs to be from a grass-fed cow. We need to start thinking deeper. We need to start thinking more about, hey, if I'm going to eat this meat from an animal, what was that animal eating before it died and I ate it? You know, I know it's kind of awful to think, but at the same point, I don't want to eat the sickest, fattest cow on the on the on the land. I want to eat the healthy one, right? So you want healthy cows and healthy meat. Those are your grass-fed cows. Those are your organic-fed chicken. That's your wild-caught fish. So these are the things that we need to start doing. So here's some just three things that you could do to help reduce heart disease: fatty acids. So we talked about the omega threes and the omega sixes. Um, oh, Whitney says uh, I'm going to throw this up here because I haven't gotten to do this yet. This is kind of fun. Let's see if I can get it to work. Yeah, Whitney. Hey, Whitney. Um, she says, Costco is the best place for oils and nuts. I agree with that. That's why we have them here. You can get the avocado oil there, uh, the coconut oil, and the nuts there for sure. Thank you, Whitney, for sharing that. Um, I would not buy their supplements there because the supplements are full of soybean oil, which is one of the oils we just talked about are inflammatory. So fatty acids. How do we get our fatty acids? We, we get them from our fish. Um, Omega-3s are the ones we want, and that's where we're going to get them from the wild-caught salmon is typically what you want. Do not get farm-raised salmon. I've read studies that show that that is one of the most toxic foods on earth. It's crazy because they are not eating good food. They are not eat, they're eating corn and grains when they're supposed to be eating bugs and worms and other little fish. It ruins everything. So we want the cold water fish. We want it to be wild-caught, not farm-raised. The next thing we have here is vitamin D. So vitamin D, um, I've been telling my patients a lot about this lately because we do know that vi without vitamin D, your immune system will not work. All right, it becomes super weak, will not work. You're not gonna fight off anything. And we're being told to stay inside right now and we should be going outside. Um, so what we need to do is, well here, <laughs> I'm gonna throw this up here too. Colette, that's a good question. What if you don't like salmon? What are some other good fish you could eat? Um, there is a nutritional, oh man, I don't remember the name of it, nutritional density of, well, that's, I can't remember the name of it, Colette. There is, um, there's some website that tells you the, the healthy, health, I, I'm going to say it wrong, healthiness of food, of uh, fish. It tells you what fish are full of good stuff. So the fish you don't want are the bigger fish. The bigger fish have more um, toxins in them, like tuna. And swordfish. Now, don't get me wrong. I like tuna, but I don't eat it very often because I know these facts. So what fish would I, I like to do? I like um, a grouper is another one. If you can get small grouper, it's fine. Big grouper is not as good. Um, amberjack is good. Uh, flounder is good. Because I, I agree with you, Colette. I am not the biggest salmon fan because it does taste a little fishy. Uh, Mahi is a good fish. But if we're eating fish to get the most health benefits out of it, salmon is probably going to be your best bet. So instead of eating fish, take a supplement instead. 
Make sure you're eating that, you're taking your omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids. I'm going to get to that in the next slide for you, Colette. Um, but vitamin D, if, if we're not getting enough vitamin D, our immune system will not work. And there's a study that shows being in the lowest 25% of what they call normal for your vitamin D levels, it's associated with an increase of mortality of all causes, any disease by 26%. So just go out and get some more sun. That's what we need to do, right? Um, and then magnesium. Magnesium is a heart protector. Please do not um, not take something that has magnesium in it. Um, our, all, of our, all of our vitamins have magnesium in it, but um, you can also get it from kale. Uh, kale, your greens, your spinach, this is all great stuff. So make sure if you're going to make a smoothie, throw some kale in there. If you don't like the taste of kale, throw some spinach in there. You won't taste it. It's got a lot of vitamin C in it. It's got a lot of magnesium in it. So what do I do? How do I stay healthy when it comes to eating enough fish? Because I'm not going to eat the salmon three times a week. I'm, I'm not going to do it. So, and I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like fish, um, especially like Colette said, the salmon's not her favorite. It's not mine either. Um, so I will supplement. Now, my patients that start care in the beginning, when I know they're not, they're not eating well, they haven't made a lot of changes yet, and I know that they're inflamed, I'm not going to put them on this, what I have up there. That's the optimal omega. I'm going to put them on what we call the max, max omega-3, which is just omega-3s. So that's going to take your, your anti-inflammatory omega-3s and put them up here. And we're not going to be touching the omega-6s. So what we want to do is after you start making some changes to your diet, then we can start to make some changes and add you to the optimal omega. Substitute, get rid of the omega-3s, bring in the optimal omega, which is actually the perfect ratio between omega-3s and omega-6s. Because again, we do need omega-3s, we do need omega-6s to be healthy. So instead of eating fish three times a week, I take this instead. Now, um, ours does not taste fishy. There are some stuff out there that tastes really, really fishy. I don't think ours tastes that fishy, but if you're like Whitney, who is very sensitive to that flavor, that smell, what do we do? Take it before you go to bed. You won't, you won't ever taste it. Okay. Um, so to talk about vitamin D. So again, being outside is the best way to get vitamin D, but you honestly have to have all your clothes off for about 20 to 30 minutes around noon to get the right amount of vitamin D. Fact is we're not doing it. Okay. We're not going to be doing that. So take a vitamin, take a supplement, do it anyway, get a supplement in. So vitamin D, this is probably the most popular supplement that we have in our office because this is something I feel like everybody needs. Um, it's 5,000 international units of vitamin D in every capsule. Um, not only does it have the vitamin D in it, but it also has 10 billion CFUs of probiotics in it. So that is good for your gut health. But the other reason why we put the probiotics with vitamin D is that when you take vitamin D with a probiotic, it accelerates and enhances the absorbability of the vitamin D. And that's really the most important. If you're not absorbing any of it, it doesn't really matter. And then there was a Harvard study, I was to show you that, um, that low vitamin D levels are correlated to an increased risk of developing a heart attack or heart disease. So again, vitamin D. Now, the last supplement I wanna talk about here tonight is called the Daily Defense. And the Daily Defense, the, the purpose of the Daily Defense is for um, defending against daily attacks by inflammation. Okay, so we're, if we're constantly getting inflamed, we're eating poorly or not as good as we should be or stressed. Again, I know we can only do so much with the stress. If you have heart disease or are afraid of it, if you have cancer or have had cancer, type 2 diabetes, any inflammatory disease, this is probably one of the most powerful things out there right now that can help reduce inflammation in your body. Um, there's three things in it. Number one is C3 complex, which is your curcumin. You may have heard of turmeric before. Um, the active ingredient in turmeric that is anti-inflammatory is actually called curcumin. And we have a C3, so it's three different curcuminoids in there. So it's very, very powerful, very, very absorbable, and really anti-inflammatory. Um, Indian gooseberry, that is a powerful antioxidant and cardiovascular support because it's very, very high in natural vitamin C. And the third thing we have in there is called extramel, which is a form of superoxide dismutase or SOD. And that is I believe it's either the first or the second most strongest antioxidant. I can't remember if it beat glutathione or not. Or it's probably up there with it to combat cellular damage. And that cellular damage is being done by our poor diet and inflammation. So if you're afraid of or have inflammation or have had heart disease, absolutely, please take this daily defense. It's the best thing that you could do. So what can we avoid? 
Well, medications like aspirin, ibuprofen, especially right now, Tylenol, they are all well known to actually increase cardiac mortality, yet doctors are telling people to take their aspirin every single day. Do your own research on it. The research I'm showing it actually makes things worse. Um, statin drugs is another one that we talked about earlier. Why are we reducing our cholesterol when the cholesterol is there to protect us? Okay, I'm not here to tell you to stop taking your medications. I don't do that. You can talk to your doctor about that. I'm just trying to help you understand why we have high blood pressure, why we have high cholesterol, and making some better choices. Another thing that we can avoid is wheat. Wheat. So if I eat wheat, I'm sensitive, and I really truly believe that everybody's sensitive to wheat, just at different different heights of sensitivity. And I, if I eat wheat, I start to gain weight pretty quickly. And my stomach starts to hurt again. I get my IBS back, which is why I avoid it. But wheat actually has profound cardiotoxic potential. All right. Other health effects. So it's like, why would we eat this? If you look at the countries that eat the most wheat, they are the heaviest country and they have the most heart disease and cancer. OK, correlation, causation. Take a look at it yourself. It's something that I would like to get out of my diet. I rarely eat bread. I rarely eat wheat. There are gluten free options. Some of them are still not as good as others. Um, but I found ways to just get rid of wheat altogether. Um, it's, and I don't really miss it. I really don't. And the other thing that we can avoid is becoming this guy here, Mr. Couch Potato, right? So like I said, let's get up, let's start moving, let's start exercising. Again, if you're a patient, Max T3, those are the best workouts. You should be doing those right now three days a week. What else are you going to be doing at home, right? Get out, go for walks. This is a good thing, all right? So if you're not a patient, maxt3.com, you can actually plug in your information and buy the subscription. I don't think it's a subscription. I think it's like either $12.99. I know it's less than $20 for lifetime access. And you can access it on your phone, on your laptop, on your, on your uh, iPad and do these workouts. And these workouts are challenging. They are really good, but most of them are 12 minutes or less. I'm all for, I'm all for the, the short workout. That's my favorite part of the workouts that we do. As soon as we start, I'm almost done already. That's, that's why I said I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of working out, but I do it because I know we need to do it and it's good for us. Last thing here, autonomic nerve system dysregulation. That's a lot of big words. Basically, what that means is our body can't regulate our organs through the autonomic nervous system, which is the nervous system that controls our organs. Okay, so if you look at this hyper hyperkyphotic posture, so hyperkyphotic posture is this, the shoulders are rolled down forward. I, can't, I don't know if you can see me here. So they're, so they're forward and then you have this forward head posture. You lost the curve in your neck when you're supposed to be sitting up properly like this. So what does that do? There's an increase association of rate of death due to atherosclerosis, heart disease. Men who lost three centimeters or more in height were 60% more likely to die of heart disease and lung disease. Why is this? I want to show you. So if you look right here, I don't know if you can see my pointer. It's pretty small, but I'm right there where that red line is. This curve in this person's neck from the side should be one curve. It goes up. Here at the bottom, it goes the wrong way, then it comes back the right way. Where it goes the wrong way, this pressure on these nerves, those nerves go to your heart and they go to your lungs. So like we talked about earlier, if the brain is sending signals down the spinal cord, out along nerves down here where the heart and lungs go and they're being choked off significantly is your heart is your lungs going to be functioning better or worse obviously they're going to be functioning worse this is not a good thing because what happens there we take we if it's functioning worse and we do nothing about it over time it's going to lead to what disease dysfunction possible heart attack so i'm going to show you a picture um, of a patient of ours um, this gentleman came in and he didn't really have any complaints except for a little bit of neck tightness, just a little bit of neck tightness. And he started care because we explained to him because that, that x-ray looks a lot like the x-ray I just showed you. And there's a ton of pressure on that lower part of his neck. Again, right down through here, there's a lot of pressure on that spinal cord. And those are the nerves that go to the heart and go to the lungs. But if you look at the front edge of the spine, you can see these white pointy spots. That's all arthritis. The disc spaces don't look good like they did up here. They are all thin and narrowed out. So I explained to him, listen, this has been here for years. I don't think we're going to get this 
fully corrected because of the arthritis. But if we can just get some pressure off, you're going to function better. And he was all for it. And we started adjusting him. He did. He was doing well. And then I got a text one night from his wife who told me that he had passed away from a heart attack. And I know Whitney knows who I'm talking about, but he was the sweetest guy. We called him Trivia Man because every time he came in, he had either had a joke or a trivia question for us that stumped us, and he would give us the answer the next week. And we missed this guy. And the problem here is that he didn't catch this soon enough. And that was one of his big things he mentioned to me over and over. I wish I just knew this stuff years ago. If I just took care of this years ago, I would, I would, I'd be fine. I wouldn't have to worry about anything. And then this is what took him down. This saddens me every time I think about that, but I do get to smile because I love that guy. Um, <laughs> um, so how do you know? This is the scary part about this whole, this whole story with him. He only knew and found this out that he had subluxation down in that part, that part of his neck causing heart issues and lung issues because he decided to come and get a checkup. Just because his neck was a little bit tight, he came to dinner with another friend and heard what I had to say. And he said that made a lot of sense. How do you know if you have a subluxation? Now, if you're a patient of mine watching, I know you know, because you came to me and we did an exam. We took some x-rays and found out that they were subluxations and we are fixing them. We're working every single week to get you better and keep you there once we take that pressure off. Because how long would we want pressure off of our nerves? Forever. If you're sitting there, you're not a patient and you're wondering, well, how do I know? How, how can I figure this out? You need to go to a chiropractor and find out. Get an exam, take some x-rays. All right. I know some of you that are watching live nowhere near my office. If you want to come to my office and you're here and you're close to us, come give us a call. Our phone number is 770-345-9355. You can find us on the website. You can find us online. You can find us on Facebook, which I recommend you guys follow us on Facebook. If you call or text or email or whatever to get a set up an appointment, we're going to give you a discount to do so. Instead of the exam and x-rays typically are 120, we're going to do it for 60 because you spent that time here with us today. And I know the reason why you're going to make the appointment would be to find out how is your nervous system functioning? Is there a problem that you don't know about that you want to address? If there's no problem, awesome. You get a high five. If there is a problem, how can we help fix this as soon as possible? All right. So all you got to do is give us a call, text, email, whatever it is. Um, if you live nowhere near my office and you still want that opportunity to get checked, the best thing you could do is go to the website, maxliving.com. And when you go to maxliving.com, you can type in your address and they will find you the closest Max Living doctor to you. And you can call them up and tell them that you heard this information on a webinar online and you want to get a spinal evaluation. And I'm sure they would be glad to help you out because without that knowledge, how are you going to do anything different? So. I hope you guys learned a lot here tonight, and I hope that you take away some information and even more information is great and all, but if you don't do anything with that information, it was a waste of our time and waste of your time. And I don't want that for you. What I'd like you to do is just pick a couple things, a couple nuggets that really you know drove you home, um, drove home to you and you really enjoyed. Make that a comment. Tell us what you really enjoyed learning about this. What was eye opening? But I want you to do something about it. I want you to make a change, whether it's I'm going to start taking fish oil or it's I'm going to go get my spine checked or, you know what, I'm actually going to get off the couch instead of watching people work out. I'm actually going to join in and do it with them. All right. I want you guys to make these changes. And, you know, I was talking to Whitney before we left here tonight. Um, for those of you that are watching here tonight and you would like to get some supplements, some of the ones we talked about, it doesn't matter. We're going to offer you 15 percent off any of the supplements that you would like here at the office until May 1st. All right. So you have about a week or so. It's, I guess it's till next Friday, not tomorrow, but the Friday after. Um, all you got to do is actually text us, text our phone number 770-345-9355. I think Whitney put it into the comments over there. If you text us your order, you'll get 15% off your order. Okay. Um, again, the same thing goes for the uh, the discount for the exam and x-rays. It'll be good through May 1st. Guys, thank you so much. I hope this went well. I hope you guys enjoyed this information and I hope you guys uh, stay healthy and I'll see you all soon.